And protecting your solar input from an EMP attack on pretty much any solar generator has never been easier than now. This is not a sponsored video in any way, shape, or form. I've paid for everything out of my own pocket here. But by far, the easiest way to protect your solar generator from an EMP attack is by using a Tech Protect Faraday bag. This has a military spec on it. It's tested to that military spec. And this material has specifically been used by NASA for protection. Now, this is obviously a small one. It's meant for phones, radios, and other small devices. At techprotectbag.com, you can find sizes that even this E3600 or this Jackery unit can all fit inside of. So check out techprotectbag.com if you're interested in getting an affordable option that you just put your solar generator inside of the bag zip it up and now it's 100% EMP protected. But what if you need to protect your solar generator while it's in use? That's really the trick and that costs a bit more, but there is an easy way to do it. I'm gonna show you how you can do it in this video. That is by using an EMP shield, but you have to have the right one. And this is where people get tripped up. This is a 600 volt DC EMP shield. This is meant to work with solar generators that have a solar input of about 450 volts and higher. And the confusion comes in is because this says 600 volts, but it's covering a unit that goes down to 450 volts. And the reason that is, is because there is actually a tolerance with each one of these EMP shields that extends beyond the range listed. So for things like your Apollos, your Delta Pro Ultra, your 6000 XP, 12000 XP, 18K PV, those types of solar inputs, you're going to want the 600 volt EMP shield. Now for units like the E3600 from Pecron, the Delta Pro from EcoFlow, the Bluetti AC300, the newer Anchor Solix 3800 Plus, they all have a max solar input of about 150 to 165 volts. So this is the trick. You want to take the maximum voltage of the solar input and get the model of EMP shield that has the voltage above that. So this is a 220 to 300 volt EMP shield, which is gonna work perfectly for a charge controller like this that goes up to 150 volts. And then there are tons of units that use a charge controller that only goes up to about 60 to 65 volts. And that's where you want the 90 to 120 volt EMP shield. Now there's one other trick you can do to save hundreds of dollars doing this. And that is with units like the E3600 or the Titan Solar Generator, or even if you're just using two units next to each other of any kind, if they have the same charge parameter, just like this has up to 250 volt inputs, you can get a double shield that has two sets of wires coming out of it. And all it means is that within the box, they fit two EMP shields. They're completely separate. They're not connected together by series or parallel or anything. They're two completely separate units inside of the same box. So rather than paying $400 twice, you can pay closer to, I think they're like $600, and then that'll cover both inputs. Now, the other things you're gonna need is some THHN 10 gauge wire. I bought this from Home Depot. Additionally, you'll need MC4 connectors and the metal pieces that go inside as well as the MC4 crimp tool, wire snips. This is a traditional kind that works with cutting the ends off, or this is a kind that specifically is meant for cutting the ends of the wire sheathing off. Has some high strength double-sided tape, need scissors for cutting the tape. And then this is two multi-tap connectors. These are actually pretty expensive. And essentially what this is, is a branch connector. We're gonna make one of these positive and one of these negative. And we're gonna have our positive input come in, EMP shield get connected and then our positive output. We'll do the same on the negative side and this is gonna allow that solar input to come in, turn on EMP shield so that way it's adding the protection and then pass that energy to the solar generator. And then to work with that multi-tap connector, you'll need a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Now, why would we wanna do this? Now the biggest reason why we wanna do this for an EMP attack or even a lightning strike is because the solar panels and the solar cables are going to be the biggest collectors from an EMP attack. Depending on how close you are to the middle of an EMP attack will determine how strong the EMP hits your equipment. So with that, you can have anywhere from 50 to 80 kilovolts per meter. So the solar panels, all the cables on the ground are gonna collect that energy and send it into your unit. And that's where you want the EMP shield to stop it. Now the unit itself is also susceptible to EMP attacks, which is why you'd want to have it enclosed in a Tech Protect Faraday bag, or even better if you wanna use this while an EMP happens, then you want to get the 120 volt AC output protection EMP shield. That plugs directly into one of these outlets and it makes all of the outlets in that phase protected from an EMP, as well as it gives you additional outlets. So that way it's like a power strip and gives you more protection. I'll have links and coupon codes in the description down below. This is a completed EMP shield that I made for my E3600 LFP. 
This is a 220 volt to 300 volt EMP shield. I should have bought the double. So that's one of the mistakes that I made. Don't make the same mistake. The ground wire can be simply plugged in to the grounding port of an outlet or run to its own ground rod in the ground outside. On each of the positive and negative cables, I have my multi-tap lock here. I have my input, I have my EMP shield wiring, and I have my output. So the way this will work is I'll have the solar cables coming from the solar panels plug in directly into here. I'm going to take my output wire and plug it into my positive cable on my MC4 adapter. Then I'll do the same with the negative. It's going to go to the negative cable of the adapter. And just like that, the unit is now protected from an EMP strike through the solar panels. By adding on the output protection, then everything else is going to be protected that is connected to this, as well as all of the internals of this unit itself. So very quickly, I'm going to show you how you can do this yourself. I'm just going to make one of these blocks positive and the other one negative. Slide my input cable in and using the Allen wrench, tighten down right in here. To use ferrules, that's really going to be best. Now for my output side, I'm going to put on the other side of this. All you're making sure is that you are not squishing down on the sheathing. You want to be only on the copper wiring itself. I'm going to keep this all symmetrical. I made one side of this long, which indicates my input side and the other side of it short to indicate my output side. And I'll place the negative cable into the negative multi-tap and the positive end to the multi-tap. It seriously takes less than five minutes, including stripping the wires and everything to make this. Now there is another simpler way that you can do this as well, but I wanted this to be able to handle high amperage, which is why I prefer these taps here. But the easier way of doing this is by getting a two to one MC4 branch connector. You're basically gonna do the same thing, but you're going to not use this multi-tap connector. And on the ends of the black and red cables from the EMP shield, you're going to add MC4 connectors. These MC4 connectors can easily be purchased on Amazon, but basically you'll have your solar input coming into one side of your branch connector, your EMP shield going into the other side of the branch connector, and then that combines down to one output, which then you can use to plug in directly into your unit, whether that's through the adapter or directly into the side of it, because it has built-in MC4 connectors. And really that's all there is to it. Find a spot to ground it and you're done. Remember this video is not sponsored in any way. If you use the links down below, you will get coupons. You get discounts on the EMP shields and those are affiliate links to also help out the channel. I truly appreciate any support that I can get. Now the exception to all of this is the units like the Jackery. They use a proprietary eight millimeter barrel connector, which means that the solar cable is coming down to one cable and the barrel connector has a positive on the outside and a negative on the inside or however they have it wired. And that means you cannot separate the positive from the negative to get it into a splitter like this. So because of that, if it has some type of barrel connector or any connector where you're not able to physically split the positive and negative, then this will not work for those units. If that's the case, your only option is to put it inside of a Faraday bag and not be using it when the EMP goes off. This will also work for DIY systems or grid tied systems, and they have units for the AC output, for the DC input, the batteries, everything. I'll have those links down below. They even have units for vehicles. I use them on all of my vehicles to make sure that if an EMP happens and my vehicle gets hit, that I'll be able to at least get home or get to my destination. You'll also find this video helpful if you're looking for a really easy and affordable solar panel stand that requires no permitting. It's cheaper than making your own stands, generally speaking, and it's way cheaper than using folding or flexible solar panels.